Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Woman Radio. This is episode number 208. I am your host, Tammy Treyer. And for those of you that are new to Mountain Woman Radio and myself, my family and I embarked on an off-grid journey a decade ago. And we enjoy inspiring and educating others on traditional living and one of the other things that we share here is actually on high-functioning autism. And that is a result of our son um, being high-functioning autistic. But one of the amazing benefits of our off-grid and traditional lifestyle is that we gave our son Austin an opportunity to um, be able to um, live life on his terms, by his terms, and he has utilized that to overcome 98% of his autism tendencies. And today, he is joining me. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> I'm so glad to have him joining me because as many of you know, he embarked on a really cool journey of his own back in October of 2019. And um, you guys, many of you have been asking for an update and, um, asking how he's doing so what better way to do that than take advantage of a visit he joined me on friday which was valentine's day which was actually pretty awesome and uh got to spend the weekend with him so we've had a really good time and we thought we would take advantage so why don't you share with everybody since not everybody knows what you embarked on what have you been up to since october i went to a place called job Corps. um it's basically a place where you can learn different trades like working on automotive vehicles like the electrical and all the other parts of automotive stuff and then there was heavy equipment repair okay. and heavy equipment operation where you work with forklifts and and backhoes and stuff like that. Okay. And that is a trade that you entered. You had lots to choose from. Yes. What intrigued you most about that field? I know, but why don't you share that with our audience? To finally get to work on my Jeep yeah. so I could learn how to do it. Okay. Because I have a lot of work to do on the Jeep. Okay. And hopefully I'll be able to get it soon to... To the job core. To the facility so you can work on it there and yeah. use it as a project for the rest of the kids. Yeah. Students. Um, the other thing with that is um, you've always been a hands-on kind of kid and guy. And that has been part of your makeup since you were little. And it's mm -hmm. this has been kind of a dream of yours also. Uh, small Motors is how you started and this door just opened and you're embracing automotive, but you also have the opportunity to embrace the heavy equipment repair as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. I just think it's so awesome for you because you are a hands-on kid and man at this point. Now, I can no longer call him my mountain boy. He is definitely <laughs> a mountain man. And uh, this is just such a very cool opportunity for him um, tell everybody about your Jeep, um, what year it is, and how you attained it, because that's pretty cool too. It's a 1951 Jeep Willie. I acquired it by working for a friend of ours. Should I say his name? Sure, you can. John Sherman. I was working and cleaning up his property to get it so I could work on it. It looked really cool the day I saw it, so I wanted to start working on it, but I haven't been able to work on it since because I didn't have the money or the place to work on it. Right, right. And so you bartered. You bartered your time for this Jeep. Yep. And it's a very cool Jeep. I will include a picture. Uh, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, I will include a picture at the, the end of this video so you can see for those of you that have not seen um, his Jeep. We've shared it in the past on our YouTube and um, in some of the articles I wrote for New Pioneer. But it's a pretty awesome project. Why don't you lay down, Mrs.? We have a big dog who starts to cry when her bed is taken. So, all right. 
So this is a really awesome opportunity, but share a little bit about how Job Corps works and what the majority of the kids come from that are there. It's set up for kids who have like a bad background okay. so that they can get a job out in the real world and, kind and of be able to work and be able to get a place of their own. It's, a, it's kind of like a last chance effort for them to do something good for themselves, right? Yes. And you had the opportunity. It's not just for kids like that. It is um, a federally funded program. And um, because of uh, Austin and being high functioning autistic, this was an opportunity for him also. So I wanted to talk today a little bit about it. Um, many of you ask about Austin and ask about um, how you can be praying for him. So why don't you share that with us? What are some, what, what, how could our audience be praying for you while you're there? Just that I learn as much as I can so I can get out as soon as possible. Okay. So I can start working okay. and actually get my own place. Okay. And, and then be able to start my own business later on so I could help more people out. Very awesome. Very awesome. Um, is there any other prayers that you would um, like people to lift up for you? Not that I can think of right now. Okay. How about to... Um, be a light there. That's a good one. You, is it true that you've felt that that is part of your being there, maybe? Some and some not. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the struggles while you're there um, in that environment? Just being around some of the kids. Or just the pain some of them to be around. It can be hard because of what they've walked out, what they've been experiencing. Yeah. So it's almost a good prayer as well uh, for us to be lifting them up as well, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty cool opportunity, though. You have seen some pretty neat things happen there, too. And as a result of being there, you've been challenged to take on some other roles. Can you share um, what some of the other things are that you have, one, already attained, and two, that you're attempting to? There's only one now that I'm trying to attain. Okay. Because the other one is already taken. Okay. So it was ICL leader, basically helping out with the new kids who are coming in, okay. guide them to what th they need to do and what they shouldn't do in Job Corps. Okay. What inspired you to want to do that? I just wanted to help them out. Um, I know you shared with me when you first got there, it was difficult because there wasn't really good guidance. Yeah, th there wasn't very good guidance at all there. You basically had to go ask either one of the other guys who've been there for a long time or go look for a different staff member in the area. And sometimes that's hard to find. They're pretty busy. Yeah. So you chose to step into a leadership position so that you could be a better help to those coming in and give them kind of a... Um, Start them off on a good foot, on a good yeah. note. And help if they need help with problems, like with other students, because there's going to be that many people like that in Job Corps. Right. That cause a lot of trouble. Right, right. And and it's, it's a challenging place because um, kids that go there are not given three strikes and they're out. They mess up one time and the opportunity to learn these trades is gone. They are removed from the program. Not always. No, it depends always. what they do. Okay, okay. So like if they assault somebody, they're immediately kicked out. Okay. But if they like don't wake up on time, 
They got three strikes and they're married. Okay. Okay. So in some cases there are three strikes, but they're yeah. they're pretty. And sometimes you get exempt from those kind of things. Depending on what your chores are or what you're doing or yeah. Okay, in the situation. Mm -hmm. So. You know, they, they really are kind of hardcore with that. Um, you know, they want to give these kids a chance, but at the same time, they want to protect other kids that are in the program. Um, so it's it's been a pretty, pretty interesting environment for Austin to be in. Um, but you've met some pretty good people. Yeah. And um, I think that your decisions that you're making there to be in leadership and also you're going to be now applying for um, student government. And just share with me, why why do you feel led to do that? Because then I can help out also arrange trips so that the kids can go out on more trips because they're not always going on trips. Okay. Because those basically either low like funds or not good behavior on other kids. Right, right. So it's a rare thing sometimes. And also with the staff not always being there, it can't always be planned out right. So there's limit, a lot of limitations at times that prevent you guys from mm -hmm. having opportunities or for giving them good structure. Yeah. So I think it's really awesome. I'm watching Austin bloom in this position because he went there to learn a trade, but it's neat to see him, you know, to see you flourish and want to take on other roles. You know, you may, you said sort of, kind of not, sort of, kind of you want to be, or that you feel you're a light and sort of, kind of not, yeah. but you may not realize it. But looking at it from the outside, the roles that you're choosing to take on there are going to enable you to be a light to these kids that need structure. And I think it's really awesome. It's really, really awesome of you. So, um, what are some words you would give to inspire not only my audience and my, my listeners, but other kids that might be struggling or other kids with um, varying disabilities, what are what what would you say to encourage them? To never give up. Keep on moving towards your goal. And if you're having a hard time, look for someone who can help you. Awesome. Very good advice. Very good advice. And you know, that applies to not only kids but adults because we all have um, residual baggage from our past yeah. that could maybe hold us back from embracing our dreams. And you guys hear me talk about that all the time. And what's, you know, you're, you keep your eye on the prize. Why do you do that? So I can move ahead in life. Okay. Keep going down the direction I want to go. Good. Good. And um, is that something you've always done? No, not all the time. I didn't always do that. What changed that? Living here, I guess. Mm, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. And you've watched your dad and I be embracers and not willing to quit when everything keeps breaking around us and yeah. going through varying struggles. Um, you know, you watched, you've watched the good, the bad, and the ugly unravel a lot, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, I did. But you've also watched as it unraveled and how the pieces were picked up. And yeah. What did you see most in those situations? Good things happening. Everything yeah. going up rather than down. Yeah. But what would you say um, was the biggest thing in that? Um, you know, it started out bad, but to get to the other side, what did it take? A lot of effort, for sure. 
Yeah, yeah. And and perseverance, and and always keeping your eye on the prize. I've just seen you grow so much, and it's been such an amazing gift to me to be the chosen one to raise you because you've you've really to to know the struggles you had when you were young and to just watch you flourish, you know, um, it's just been amazing. And I'm, I'm so very proud of you. I'm so very proud of the things you've accomplished. And it's just really neat to see your growth and, and what your goals are and, and you know, what you're doing. And it's, I'm, I'm just really proud of you. And I'm really grateful that you took the time with me while we're here. Our time was limited, but I'm really grateful that you were willing to to share this with my audience, I know they will be very grateful because when I do my Facebook Lives every week, they all want to know how you're doing. So, because they ask that all the time, how are you doing? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Mom, what is your favorite thing there in the trade? You know, what is um, what are you enjoying most right now? Getting to help work on the cars okay. that they bring in. Is there any particular um, area of that field that you enjoy more than another, or haven't you been in it enough to determine that yet? I have not been in it enough to have determined that yet. Okay. So, will you continue to keep us updated when you return for visits that we can um, progress with you and see how, see how you're how you're working your way through it? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Awesome. Um, this program is not for somebody. You have to be pretty strong to be there, don't you? Pretty. Pretty strong, for sure. Yeah. And if you get angry very quick, you don't not want to go there. <laughs> or you'll get kicked out or go to jail. One of the other. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, and. That's a life skill. That's something you learned early because you dealt with uh, anger issues as a result of dairy when you were young. So learning to contain your emotions, your your anger, um, and, and that was a life skill that you learned early. And um, unfortunately, that's not always true for everybody. I mean, there's a lot of us that experience road rage and all kinds of other things as adults. You know, it's, it's a good skill and a good life skill to have is being able to contain your emotions and um, to be able to roll with the punches. And um, I think that's something that you've had to learn there with all the difference in personalities. And, um, yeah, and, sure. and you know what? That's pretty much no different than what you're gonna experience in life. Um, you know, in the world you deal with so many different kinds of people and different kinds of situations. So learning how to cope in those environments and and to be bigger than the struggles in your environment is important. Yeah. You've learned that a long way too. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know how to cope, you're not going to succeed very well. Very true. Very true. And having goals and plans and dreams and keeping your eye on the prize enables you to stay a little more um, focused, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And kind of helps. Um, you know, there's, there's kids that struggle with varying things, their anger, um, being afraid to step out of their comfort zone. Um, that used to be you. Yeah. That was definitely used to be me. <laughs> yeah. One of the things we did here on our homestead is we built a stilted tree house for Austin. He was afraid of heights. And some people would say that was awfully mean of us to push him into such a situation. Um, but what did that do for you? It helped me out. It was easier to get on roofs. I wouldn't have even climbed two steps before. Yeah, so you, he had to get into the treehouse via a ladder. And um, the reason he mentioned the roofs is because um, as the mountain man has been progressing with his 
um, construction business, he's needed help. And um, Austin was up on several roofs with him, helping him do uh, patchwork and, and, and some roofing issues. So um, how do you view, do you have a comfort zone? Someone and someone not. And when you hit that comfort zone, does it debilitate you or are you willing to step out of it? Willing to step out of it. Why would you say that is? Because if you don't, aren't willing to step out, then you wouldn't basically do anything in your life. Not debilitating. Mm -hmm. Plus, would you agree with me? Because I say this all the time, the best things in life are on the other side of your comfort zone. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> It's been pretty cool. And it's a wild place to be, you know, if you're not, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, if you're not ambitious and you're not um, willing to do wild things and, and be creative and be a little crazy, you know, and not hold yourself back, um, you really end up doing some pretty neat things in life. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, one of the other things that you embarked on was riding a motorcycle. That was difficult at the beginning. It was. It was. I yeah. almost took out our solar panels. <laughs> you were brave to share. We've never told anybody that, but yeah, he got on the throttle and and didn't let go. So to the solar panels he went and luckily we were able to divert that situation. <laughs> but you're not alone. It's And the thing is, one of the things with Austin is that um, he had a hard time doing multiple things at a time. It was overstimulating and difficult. Um, even when it came to driving initially, that was overwhelming to mm -hmm. you as well. Yeah. You know, like uh, when you're driving, if he had to do the windshield wipers or a radio or blinkers even, it was it was a lot to process at one time. So for him to learn to drive and then to be willing to take on riding a motorcycle where you are shifting and braking and using a clutch and your foot and, you know, it was a lot. And... You know, you said it was difficult in the beginning, but it didn't take you long. No. It really didn't. That was really awesome. Still have to get things fixed on that. Yeah. Yep. Get some, some things tuned up and you'll be good to go. Yeah. Then it would be a road, more road. Worthy. Road. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, for those of you out there that struggle um, with any kind of um, uh, disability, of any kind, um, you can overcome things. It just takes perseverance, willingness, and and determination. And you know, for those of you parents out there, um, you know, when I taught Austin to drive, I knew it was going to be an interesting challenge, and we we took a long time and we got lots of hours under our belt and we went to places where we knew things couldn't happen and and we um, got creative. Uh, do you remember how I tested you as to whether how you would react in a vehicle if something happened inside? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were driving down the road, he was driving down the road and we had just picked up a package and it was sitting in between us and I was, we were at a place in the road where if he did react, there weren't any cars coming, you know, no hard, no foul, but I, I needed to see how he was going to react. So I slammed my hand down on the box and I yelled really loud and he's just driving and he lifts his eyebrow and he looks over at me and he goes, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, you passed. <laughs> I was busy paying attention to the road. And you did good. You did good. You know, we test all those things out. And, and he can, you know, our our rule was when you get in the vehicle, you turn the radio onto the station you want it to be on. You get the volume where you want it to be. And you don't touch it once you start driving. You know, because in the beginning, 
it was just too much. And as he progressed, you know, as with anything and with anybody. So don't feel that if you have limits right now, that those are the limits you are stuck with for, <laughs> for your lifetime. Exactly, right? Yeah. Right, you can always overcome challenges. And, and the more you work at it, and, and um, one, of your, one of your things too is you have great faith. And um, you're very prayerful as well, are you not? Mm -hmm. So that has been a great help too. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he keeps running between our legs. And you should have saw what he was doing on the camera. <laughs> what did he do on the camera? He put his head to the ground and was scratching his head. Oh, he was doing too. his thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you want to hear him when I'm doing my, I was doing my Facebook live the one day and he's lying on the floor grunting and snorting and I'm like, it's not me, but they couldn't see the dog. <laughs> so, you know what? For all of us, life can be challenging, but... It's all about what we choose to do and whether we choose to stay where we're at or we decide to overcome or to push ourselves. And I've always been a pusher and I've always been, you know, aggressive in embracing my dreams. And I'm so grateful to see him taking on that role and being always having been bigger than his struggles and, and now to see the things that he's accomplishing. And, you know, it may not be always easy doing what you're doing right now, but you're in it for the long run. Yeah. And you're devoted. Mm -hmm. and, and as things, as you hit things, maybe walls or uh, areas that aren't comfortable to you, you are still stepping out and still progressing forward. Yeah. So you don't look back, you look forward, right? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So we've taken up enough of your time today and we've got to get some things going around here. So I'm just going to give you one more opportunity. Is there anything else you'd like to share or say? Um, any words of encouragement? I think I've said everything. Good. All right. Well, good luck to you. I'm going to miss you. I'm and miss you too. And we look forward to your next visit and your next update. And we'll, we'll all be praying for you and um, cheering you on from many different places because you do have a very prayerful audience. So thank you for taking the time with me today. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And guys... Thank you so much. If you think of Austin, please lift him in prayer. Um, he's in a challenging environment, but he's doing really awesome. And uh, we just pray that God will use him there. But thank you again for joining me. If you'd like to see the show notes, um, I will have links in there for information on Job Corps. Um, and you can go to our website at treyerwilderness.com slash podcast 208. And uh, just give it a thumbs up, a like, a review, depending on where you're watching this. But we really thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of Mountain Woman Radio. And thank you also for joining us at treyerwilderness.com. So take care until the next episode. God bless. God bless. I say God to thee. How great thou